Hey everybody, and welcome to the second part of the texturing of the ter terracotta pot that we started off in the first part. So if you haven't seen that one, go over and check it out. And in this one, we're going to actually continue by creating the second layer or something like the glazed part over here or something like this. And also we can choose even something like this. Actually, I like this because we have different types of colors and it's kind of very vibrant. So let's go with something similar like this. This is what we have so far. So now the next thing that I want to do is I want to add a new fill layer. And the first thing that happens is that if I take a look at my image over here, I'm going to notice that this glazed part that's going above the clay is basically a very very smooth reflective and shiny coat so what this does it covers up all the imperfections that come from the actual clay that we can see over here all these bumps now the way to do that or cover that up is very simple here as well all we have to do is go over in the height and as you can see over here, it's set up as linear dodge. And all you got to do is just change this thing to normal. And now all the details from the height are going to stay up here in this layer. So if we turn it off, we can see that those details are there. Turn this thing on and they're gone. All right. So having done that, I'm going to get back to the diffuse. And first thing, change the diffuse. Same thing that we did in the previous part. Click on the color picker and choose the color from my image. So this is the darkest color that I can find in this image, which is roughly around here. And when you're picking your colors, you what you want to do is you want to shy away from using the color picker on a place where it's very, very dark in the shadows is that it will give you a very unrealistic uh, value or pick something that's in over here where you have all the highlights is that again is going to give you unrealistic colors what you want to choose is something that's going to be a more of a neutral spot so something like this so we have this color and again this is again going to be very glossy so i'm going to increase the glossiness to something like maybe 0.95 there we go, very, very glossy. And I want to break this thing apart. As you can see over here, it kind of looks very hazy and it kind of looks like it's been splattered across. So to get that result, we're going to choose another fill layer. I'm going to go over in the diffuse color, choose one of the lighter colors like this. And just like we did previously, on top of here, we're going to use right click, add black mask. And here, add a paint or add a fill. And procedurals. And from here, if I take a look at this thing, it kind of looks like it's clouds or some sort of a paintbrush. So let's try with clouds. For Yes, there is. There is a cloud one, so we can choose any of these. So click here, input, and right away I can see that the first thing that it's gonna do is gonna give me a bit of an issue since uh, I have those uh, aligns for the UVs, which again, we know we can control with the projection. So click on triplanar projection, and we get this sort of a look. If I increase the scale to maybe like five, there we go, we get a nicer look. By decreasing the balance, I can control where those uh, appear. The contrast here is going to make them sharper or less sharper or more blurry. So I'm actually okay with how this thing looks. And the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create another fill layer. And this one I'm going to fill up with 
even brighter colors some something like this move it maybe even like so and in here let's do the same thing again add a fill layer well actually delete that click on black mask and then add a fill layer on the mask now having done that let's just use a different cloud over here there we go so UV projection no, but triplanar projection. And this triplanar projection, let's increase the scale again to five, maybe even less, three, two. All right, not bad. So I can also control how well I can see this thing. So if I decrease the opacity, on this layer I can see I did that I can decrease this layer and I get a much more closer look now but also I probably want to get a different grunge for this one so instead of a clouds let's see if we have some leaks yes we do grunge leaks so let's see how this thing is gonna look not sure Oh, definitely not. Grunge leaky paint. Nah, not really happy with that. Let's see. Mm, why not? This is actually not that bad. I can probably get this thing to look a bit less. And just like that. All right. Awesome. Now, next thing I want to do is I want to go in and break up the reflection on this thing. If we take a look at over here, you can see that I have some bumpiness showing up. So for that, the easiest way to be would be to go over here and inside the glossiness, so I'm going to go over in the lowest, in the glossiness, I'm going to use a procedural map and choose one of the maps over here let's go with black and white spots and try to go over in the glossiness there we go that's going to give me a nice breakup for that look i can go over here do the same thing in the glossiness as well but actually i like having a different look because i can maybe use a different one and get a whole different look for this all right awesome so far so good so we have both of these let's call this uh, blue base blue breakup a one and I copy the whole thing and rename it over here blue breakup number two and again do a new folder get all of these in here rename this thing blue color and now the only thing that I can notice is as soon as I put them inside the folder what happens is that even though we have the height set up for them uh, individually so they don't show up the underlying details from the terracotta layer they are still showing it because this folder has its own individual settings so I have to go back to height and from linear uh, edge, I need to go back to normal, and that's going to fix that issue. All right. So now, having done that, I need to control or some sort of a way to control where this thing is going to appear. Now, if I take a look at this image, I can notice that I have the blue on the base and the top is really kind of bare. It might be because a lot of rain has downpoured so it's, uh, it's kind of basically wiped it off or it might be that's the way it was made but it can be the opposite way like for example if you take a look at here since this thing was sitting in the ground the under 
side here has a lot of dirt so that's a different shader I, we're not probably going to be doing that one now but you can see the difference this one has the top side one uh, one type of a material while this one has the bottom now actually that is pretty easy to do as well all you gotta do is over here in this folder for the blue color i'm gonna go over and add a black mask Right away, this is going to hide everything, and the white mask with the black mask is going to allow me to paint in where I want to see that color showing up. Now, the easiest would be to be basically go in and draw wherever you want that color, but that would be too time-consuming and not very effective. So, what we're going to do here is we're going to actually go over and scroll down to where it says smart masks now what smart masks does it has different settings so if you depending on what you choose you have cavity rusts concrete and what we're looking at at the moment though is ground dirt now if i click this and drag it above over here and just drop it in here while we have the mask selected what this thing is going to do, it will start giving me some information. Now, if I take a look at around it, I can see that now this paint started showing up, but how do we control it? In the mask editor options over here, if I click on it, it will give me some options to play with. But now, since I'm gonna be uh, moving some of these options, just so I get some better look or some better speed while i'm doing it i'm going to decrease the size over here to 2k so it's updating a lot faster so i can see uh, the result and like that the first thing that i'm going to do here or change is the global balance now by increasing this what you're going to notice is as i'm increasing it you can see that that uh, blue color from the bottom up start it's starting to raise up so if I go even uh, higher, actually, if I go to one, this is what, what is the fun, uh, interesting thing about this. If I go to one, you're going to notice one very, very sharp line ending abruptly. And I'm guessing this would be how this thing would look like if it was new and just freshly painted. But since this is not what we were going for, what I'm going to do is decrease the global balance to something like this. And now increase the contrast or decrease the contrast to basically make the blending appear sh more sharp or a bit more faded. So that's going to be the global contrast. If I go lower and control some of the other options over here, I can control the texture and that texture is going to blur it up or make it a bit more uh, sharp. We have a different texture for the second layer and all of these have been made with substance designer and they come pre-packed with substance painter so you can play around with it do whatever you like uh, if i go down we have the curvature again is going to control where this thing shows up and where it doesn't if i put it up to here you're going to see that it's starting to show up even at the uh, over here at the top I'm going to actually go bring this thing back to zero. And the interesting thing here is that at the top over here, we have this global invert. If we click on this thing, what it will do, it will basically just take this. And from what we had over here, where we had the bottom part having this uh, glaze, by just clicking on invert, we're basically getting to this point where the uh, now the bottom is uh, without the glaze but it's up here so having this this would be a nice place to start uh, with uh, this uh, texture or how to refine this texture so we don't have to start from scratch now the great thing about this is that we can build upon what we already have in here so if I go over here and add another paint layer, it's going to put it above these two. So now whatever I paint on is simply going to be added to whatever the, we did with the mask editor. Now, the great thing about this is that with the paint layer, what we have the ability to do is use alphas. 
Now, if we go over here, we can either choose to have one of our own alpha maps or even better, we can choose some of the ones that are already in here. If we go down and go through all, all of these, we're going to find some really interesting ones. So maybe try this dirt brushed. So click on it. It will right away be chosen. And here's the thing. When you right click on or just hold down control and hold the right mouse button and move left and right, you will increase the size of whatever alpha you have selected. That thing can be changed over here manually if you want. And if you hold down control and left click, go uh, left and right, you will control the flow and left click up and down will rotate the alpha. So if I go ahead, increase the flow, rotate this thing around like this, and I just stamp in, you're going to notice that whatever I have as an alpha, it's being projected on the mask and controlling exactly how that thing is going to look. So there we go. Let's go something like this. And this is one of the things you need to be very careful because you can just kind of lose track and make sure you're not using the same alpha everywhere because if you start using the same thing everywhere it's going to start it's going to start being very predictable like this is okay it's giving me that look like the color on the on the top is dripping downwards so it's, it's giving me this nice look so i'm okay with how this thing looks uh drop small and i can also just go in and maybe i want to have this thing whole painted up there we go and another thing is while you're actually uh going around your model if you don't see something without the light just hold down shift and right click and you can move the hdr that's lighting your scene so you can see your model better from all sides like this now the other thing that you can do here as well is maybe there are some uh, things that you don't like so you just go over here change the color to black and now instead of adding you can subtract you can just delete whatever specs or somewhere that you don't like you can just go in here delete those and they're gone it's gonna be very clean to generally something that you would like to have so having seen all of this uh, the only thing that I probably want to do is increase the glossiness on this thing so I'm gonna go over here choose my Where's my line uh, blue breakup? There we go. Blue breakup glossiness. I want this thing to be 0 0.95, 0 0.95. Go down here. Oh, change this to the view so I can see the color. There we go. All right. 0 0.95 on that specular. What? Ah, of course I uh, just noticed that we actually have a glossiness maps for these so that's breaking up that uh, thing or the uh, re reflections so I'm gonna leave those as they are and the last thing I actually want to show you before we actually uh, go away is there's only one more other thing that's kind of interesting addition and that is how we can even further control this by using particles now for this i'm going to add another effect another paint and this one is actually going to be over here when you scroll down you have particle brushes now the particle brushes are very interesting because you can just click here and now when you click down you see that this thing just simulates over and if i go down here and make this thing into white and just click and get this sort of a result as you can see now it looks very very uh drowsed and we can click on here choose a different uh, effect 
we can choose maybe even something like uh, this but this is a more interesting uh, or unique look which is not really what we want here but yeah you have the uh, options to use particles to pretty much make your thing very unique or how it looks and again if we choose the burn we go uh, black what we can do is just do something like this and we're gonna get a look like that which is again not what i'm looking for but just as you can see by using another paint layer on top of this uh stack here in the mask for the control over where the blue color appears you can paint in whatever you want with the help of the particle brushes without having to stamp in manually all of these leaks like i had uh, done previously there we go very similar to what we had with the uh, alphas but we're not using an alpha but we're actually using simulated leaks now provided we spend a bit more time to fine-tune where we want this thing to show up we can get a much much better result and much more believable result so with that we can just call this thing finished in the texturing phase but now comes the real question how do we get this thing back into 3ds max so we can render it out well again very easy all you got to do is go over in file go down to export textures and now here is where you want to go ahead and choose where this is going to save out your textures choose the png or jpeg or whatever you want uh, the extensions for the files to be you have a configuration pbr spec glossiness now if you go over here in the configuration pbr spec and glossiness you can see that over here you have quite a bit of different uh, results if you go over here this is the spec glossiness if you go down to v-ray you see you're going to see all of these output maps that will be uh, uh, saved out if you're using a corona you can have this thing selected so over here in the config just go scroll down to v-ray click here and this will show you all the different maps that this thing will go ahead and export so you're going to have a diffuse map reflection glossiness ior map height normal and emissive since we don't have an emissive we don't really need it but this will export out an emissive so by clicking export you will get all of these maps that you can then input into um, 3ds max and render with v-ray and just like that we are done hope you guys had fun and you managed to pick up some new tricks if you enjoyed the video then click the like button because youtube loves its likes just like a fat kid loves cake and also if you're not subscribed now is a great time to do so if you like to support me and the channel then the support links will be below in the description of the video and as always thank you very much for watching and i will see you all in the next video Peace.